During one of my classes a few weeks ago, we were looking at a biblical way to critically think about complex issues. This threefold grid, if you will, can be extremely helpful when considering how someone might respond to something as a follower of Jesus Christ and how we might go about living a life in the light of God's Word, the Bible. As Christians, we should have the same approach to God's Word as the psalmist in Psalm 119. Now, this is a long psalm. I'm not going to read it all, but he is so enamored with God's statutes that he says the same thing over and over again, communicated in different ways with different phrases. Things like, I want to obey your decrees, or I have hidden your word in my heart, or do not let me stray from your commands. He is practicing good orthodoxy. That's the first word on this three-ply filter that needs to be applied to our lives. Orthodoxy is what we think, or right thinking. For the Christian, this should be informed by the Bible. Basically, what is clearly true according to the Bible should inform what we think about something or anything. So orthodoxy is concerned with what we think, and in our case, what we think about what God's Word clearly states. The next word would be orthopraxy. That's the next filter on our lives. This is what we do, or right practice. How does our right thinking affect our right living? James 2 is a well-known verse that speaks to this reality when it says faith without works is dead. If what we believe does not inform how we act, then we really don't believe correctly. Good orthodoxy creates good orthopraxy. Then finally, there's orthopathy. We can say this is about how we feel or our right inner life, right emotions. Further defined, this would be our desires or how we feel God is moving us or leading us. Maybe you can already see why good orthodoxy is important when it comes to how we feel. God is leading us. That's too often something that I've heard people say to me. I feel like the Lord is leading me to fill in the blank. But from where I'm sitting, if I consider what God's word teaches, orthodoxy, there's no biblical way to affirm what they feel. I joked with a pastor friend recently that we should make a t-shirt that says on the front, I feel like the Lord said, then on the back put, don't question me. There's nothing wrong with our feelings or our desires per se, as long as they line up with God's word and they lead us to loving actions. Emotions do inform us of something, and at times they're helpful to engage wise actions but not always. All three of these filters, we will call them, help us the most when they work simultaneously and in priority of sequence, meaning I need my orthodoxy to inform my orthopraxy and orthopathy, not the other way around. There are times the only reason I do something in life is because I know what God's word says, not because I feel like it. This is gonna be where you are many times in life and why it's so important that God's word informs your actions and your feelings and not the other way around. If we take the antithetical approach to using these as questions, you could frame them this way. Is what I am doing biblical? Is it a good idea? Does it hurt other people? If it's unbiblical, a bad idea, or hurts others, it's time to reassess whether you're following the Holy Spirit or yourself. I want to encourage you to spend time in God's Word. Let it inform your thinking as the Holy Spirit renews your mind. I know that the spiritual progression will lead to right actions, and by God's grace, your heart and your desires will follow. Then God will use your heart and desires to lead you to right actions that line up with his word as well. It will begin to work both ways. Let's be committed to a holistic approach to our Heavenly Father, who wants us to love him, remember, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That is what he created us to do. 